It's true. I will say the the Facebook birthday thing gets me every year. And I do love being reminded that so-and-so is having a birthday and people do remember my birthday and I remember theirs, right? So the core people, we will do that for each other. But I will say it gets me every year and my birthday is this weekend. So I, I do know that's a thing to look forward to of like all those messages. To me, that is technology and social media at its best because it's connecting through the heart. And that is part of what's missing greatly right now, I think, in these in these times, that humanity, that real connection. Exactly. So I think when we get a taste of it online, it's a beautiful thing and it can be such a powerful thing. It's also here to stay. It's not going yes. anywhere. It's growing. It's evolving. And I think it's a beautiful thing that we have a choice how we want to interact with it, how much we want to interact with it. And I do think that for the friend and for the personal things, it it really helps. But interestingly enough, when we really think about it, I was thinking, well, what do I like about it? Family, fun, and friends. Those are all things that I want to have in my normal in-person life. We're girlfriends of a certain age. In midlife, we got a lot to say. So let's get loud. We won't fade away because we're girlfriends of a certain age. Hey, girlfriend. Welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age, a podcast for women in midlife. I'm your host, Jessica Neighbor. I'm a voice coach for public speakers and vocalists at Impact Vocal Coaching. And I'm your host, Fleshe Hesh. I'm a business coach and work-life balance expert for moms. We are recovering good girls and we are living well in midlife. Wait, Flache, what is a recovering good girl? Well, Jessica, it's someone who used to care way too much about what everyone else thought about her. And now she does not give a bleep anymore. <gasps> Love it. Each week we discuss a hot topic or hot flash, including culture, relationships, and life to help you live out loud. If you identify as a recovering good girl or as a girlfriend of any age, and you want to join our conversations, join us at Instagram, YouTube, or girlfriendsofacertainage.com. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. I've really got social media on the brain and I have a lot of thoughts about it. And I know you do too. Mm -hmm. And so I thought we could jump right into talking about the pros and cons of social media as Gen X ladies that we are. Oh my gosh, please. I stayed up too late just going down a rabbit hole on Instagram last night. So yeah. (laughs) So it's very timely, very timely. And you and I have different perspectives on it, right? So as always... Mm-hmm. That's part of part of the magic of us. But I'm more down on social media. I am not loving it. And I do Wait, down all- in the like, I want to be down Brandy R&B song down or down thumbs down? <laughs> down thumbs down. <laughs> I deleted my personal social media accounts about five years ago. Mm-hmm. Fun little story about that. It was actually really hard to do on a platform mm-hmm. or two. And I do not miss it one bit. I feel like I'm a middle-aged lady and I don't need to be up on there about my personal life. Uh-huh. And I miss you because I don't see you on there anymore. And when I have a funny little story, you are nowhere to be found. And a lot of my closest girlfriends are no longer on social media. So you are not alone. I think a lot of y'all, especially of a certain age, did exit and got fed up with it for a lot of various reasons. I will just say that I still really enjoy it. I really like it. But like I was saying about my Instagram rabbit hole last night, I sometimes can teeter on the verge of getting a little addicted. You know, Ah. the swipe, the scroll, it can, it can be really addictive. I do see the positives, but I think that there have been times where I've gone too long and then I feel all kinds of funky. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So people will find me on social media, even with my name, but it's all about my business because Mm -hmm. I know as a business coach, I know that my ideal clients are oftentimes on social media, especially places like YouTube and Instagram. So I do have a presence there. I do show up. I do, Mm -hmm. you know, put my best foot forward. 
but it's all businessy, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to see photos of my kids or my house or my vacations, you know, unless I'm somehow tying that in with something very particular. And I I just don't miss it at all. I used to even be having some beautiful lunch and think, I need a picture of this and I need to show it to people. Food and porn. Yeah. Food porn. Oh yeah. I'm super into food porn. I love it. <laughs> and I love watching it. I know it's very curated. It's very edited, right. airbrushed even quite mm-hmm. literally. So I'm actually going after that, but I don't miss being the subject of that at all. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. Well, it is a very tricky landscape that we're all navigating. And those of us who have younger kids are concerned for how they're navigating it. And I did come across a research by a little place called Harvard, you may have heard about it, <laughs> that did a research that shows in a pretty big study of over 7,000 people that those people who were ages 35 and up after they were on social media, um, felt more depressed and anxious. And what they discovered from this research study is that because we're more established by 35 and up, and because we didn't grow up with it, we fall down that trap of comparing ourselves to others. Mm. And so we'll really look and see what people are doing and what their status is. And we just wind up comparing ourselves. So that's fascinating. And I will agree with that study that that is probably one of the trickiest parts for me about it is when I see someone and not comparing. So I find that that really hits home for me. Does that resonate with you? It does. I can even think of specific people and situations that triggered me. Oh, look at you with your four kids all in their matching jammies. How many dirt on their faces? And it's like all these things, right? Mm -hmm. Where I was comparing my insides to their outsides. 100%. I'm like, wait, you went to Hawaii earlier this year. You're back there again? (laughs) How many trips does this person get to take? Right. And people airbrushing their families. And yes. and one person even told me, oh, yeah, so the, the four kids were there. But the youngest one, I actually, that's a Photoshop because she was off crying in the corner and wouldn't be in the photo. So like this thing that I was thinking was this perfectly drawn, crafted family. Right. Wasn't at all. Right. right. Because the real thing is there is always going to be one person who's like, <laughs> or always pitching a fit or being moody. And yet we're putting these pictures up and and we're even putting ourselves out there like, do you want to be like me? Mm-hmm. Do you want to have this beautiful life? Do you want to be in Hawaii or mm-hmm. are you jealous of me? Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that is very damaging and very dangerous and also triggers a lot of people's FOMO, this idea of fear of missing out. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had any of that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're all susceptible to it. You just see someone, you know, accomplishing something and you think, oh gosh, you know, how could I do that? And I have to say, I really appreciate the portraits when they do show the kid who's just having a hot mess. Like I do know some people on social media who just keep it real, right? Or I think sometimes we see the pendulum swing to almost like the opposite where it's like, I'm just going to show you the nitty gritty of me. And I get it. It's exactly to like, almost rebel against this curated self that we're all putting out there. But absolutely, I think that it just pokes at us. It pokes at us in all different ways. And I don't know if you watched the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma, all about like social media. But did you watch that by any chance? No, my husband did. Oh, it's so good. He gave me a very troubling uh, download on it. He's a big security guy. He's a software engineer. Uh He knows all this underbelly and i'm sure that's also influenced me pulling up pulling away in a lot of ways too so i didn't watch it but i got a lot of the overarching themes and i'd love to hear you in a minute talk about your privacy security issues because that's a huge one that is a huge one where sometimes i feel a little bit like i'm living in dreamland like la 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 nothing can harm me (laughs) like oh my gosh these like bots out here know everything about me now so it's a scary thing when you're like open you're like what am i opening myself and my family up to i re i recognize that it's a risk the thing that hit home for me with social media the social dilemma documentary was how the creators, many of the founding creators are interviewed in that documentary. And they talk about just how evil it is. They talk about how they don't let their own families use it. They know that it is designed to keep us addicted. 
and to keep us coming back, just play with all of these algorithms to just keep us hooked. So that was scary to me, right? When the creators aren't actually using the their own thing that they've created, you know that there's something highly dangerous about it. So let's get into some of the, the scary part of it. Let's talk about it. Right. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody. And it sounds like it's actually very similar to what this that documentary was about. And when that came out, I was going through a lot of stuff myself. And I was like, and my husband was like, I will give you headlines. I will let you know. Yeah. So I went on a media diet and it came out during that time where I was like, too much, too much, too much. Right. And my wonderful husband stepped up and did that for me, which I really appreciate. So, but one of the things for me is about security and privacy. If we are actively on a vacation and we're posting that on social media, people now know the house is empty or they know where to find you if someone's stalking you or something like that. I, to me, that's very troublesome. Mm-hmm. And now with AI, if you haven't heard about things like chat GPT or all these tools and editing tools that now I actually saw something the other day on a, on a business site where I buy a lot of my software mm-hmm. and it was selling software where you can now use AI to, mm-hmm. you train it on your voice and you train it on your facial expressions, you can now make deep fake videos of yourself. Uh, and so I was like, holy schmazoli, we are in a wow. very tricky time, very dangerous time. We already knew, you know, with this idea of fake news and deep fakes, but it always seemed like these, you know, hackers someplace were, were doing that. Right. But it's not. This is technology that is available to everybody at this point. It's very inexpensive. So that means like, if I'm hearing that right, that means that like they could take so many videos of my talking head and then piece it together and have me saying something entirely different. Exactly. Okay. That's a little scary. Yeah. And we're feeding the hive mind. We're feeding the hive mind with our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our behaviors. And so we don't know how that's going to be used. We don't know how it's going to be used against our children. Mm -hmm. And all those photos that we upload into the social media, we don't own that anymore. Mm. Right? It's all being cataloged, you know, by a lot of these AI bots and and massive databases and sold and used in ways that we have actually no idea. So for me, I don't really want to be a part of that. For me, I guess I have found a way to have a relationship with it for my business, but it is tricky. And I just think we just all need to kind of assess for ourselves. How do I feel about it? Does it feel good? Does it feel yucky? Right. And we were talking about this, how the good girl and the recovering good girl and how she comes out in social media. So we refer to this a lot in our show, but the idea in all of us of this person who's always trying to please everybody or look outside of themselves for social approval. Hello, social media. It is going to challenge all of our good girls in recovery and good boys in recovery for that matter, because it's just designed And now also with advertising and marketing, I don't know about you, but I am starting to buy things through my social media feeds more. And I'm happy with most of my purchases, but there've been a couple where I'm like, wait, I bought something. Wait, I was scrolling and then I bought something. There's some psychology there that is intense. Yeah. There's something very tricky about it. I can think of two things that I've bought through social media. And it was a, both of them were a really big deal. Like I bought that through social media. Mm-hmm. And then as a marketer, as an online marketer, as a business coach, I was sort of reverse engineering it. Well, how did they convince me that it was real? And it was real and it was mm-hmm. legit. Mm-hmm. But what were the signs for me that it was real? Because most things I'm like, that looks like a scam. Mm-hmm. That doesn't look right. I'm not putting my credit card in that. And mm-hmm. so it is an interesting thing. What m- builds trust? What has us know something is real and legit? Absolutely. And I think that's where I shy away oftentimes at doing my online marketing for that very reason. You would give me this lovingly feedback that it's okay. It's okay to put yourself out there on a business level. There's something for me much I'm more comfortable doing it on a personal friend to friend level, but it's like, oh God, you know, do I seem like I'm some lazy car salesman, you know, trying to sell you on something? So yeah, for a lot of us who do want to promote something even for ourselves or even like, hey, my kids are doing, you know, a walkathon at school. It's great. And yet I think we all have to find our comfort level with how much we can do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's true. I think it's very real. We need to be just be assessing. I think it's just great to take a step back 
to ask yourself. We're not here to scare you. We're not trying to persuade you of anything. But we, this is something that you and I talk about a fair amount, uh, both as business buddies. um, But I think... And this is a little tricky because you and I both know a lot of ladies who do this, and that is the direct marketing on social media. Our friends, our family, it's mostly women preying on other women. And I say the word preying Mm. um, because I think it's very tricky. You know, Mm. there aren't that many people who are making millions of dollars selling shakes and pills and exercise programs. So these direct marketing uh, companies, they teach us how to prey on our friends and family. And we get bombarded with these requests and join my team. And that's very tricky. I've really Mm -hmm. struggled with that. I remember writing an article about it, Mm -hmm. persuading women not to get into these companies because I think, A, it's hurting so many relationships, but also makes us, you know, kind of question them a little bit too. So you can hear my discomfort Uh because I have a lot of friends and family who are going to hear this and probably buy hustle. So I just think it's tricky. It's so tricky because in a way it's still the wild west. Like this whole social media thing hasn't been around that long. And so for a while, anything goes. And then I think we are getting smarter a little bit at a time, but there's like repercussions that come along with it, right? And we've seen some really serious stuff. Cyberbullying is something that is absolutely terrifying. And we know the consequences of that. And so for our younger people out there whose brains are still forming, That is something to really be careful of. I know that I did something with my kids, which was the wait till eighth grade campaign for their phones. Okay, wait, I should be honest. I did that with my first child and then I totally slipped with my second. They got one by seventh grade. (laughs) I love your honesty. Just keeping it real. So wait, when you say eighth grade, is that... I've never heard of this. My kids are not of that age yet. Yeah. Um, So this is my future. Are you saying that your friends agreed on this or this was a book you read? What what is this? Wait till eighth is this campaign. I actually think I saw it floating around social media. And then a couple of my friends and I decided to do it, which was we did not want to give our kids a phone of their own until eighth grade, because once they get their own phone, they are little junkies on it all the time. And it is a constant battle to have them put it away and not be using it and all these sorts of things, then you're on social media that much more, you know, and they're looking at YouTube all the time, or they're looking at Reddit, or they're creating their own social media campaigns. And once kids are 13, they can create their own accounts. So that was the campaign that I went on. And I'm I'm really glad I did it. Now, I know a lot of friends have a phone for their kids at an earlier age, if they were like taking the bus home, or they needed to coordinate with them. So there's no judgment there. And I did it with my own second kid. I'm like, you're taking the bus home for middle school. Here's a phone. But I just see that their development can get really like their brains can literally get hijacked once they're on one of these social media platforms. And again, these things are designed to do that. TikTok. I mean, it's delightful. Here's my feeling with some of these things. Like I was saying last night, I was up like an hour later. I discovered some hilarious comedian person on Instagram, watched one of her videos. She does these really funny things where she's multiple characters. And then I was just like, I got to watch the next one. I got to watch the next one. And what I recognized was I was studying her. I was taking some notes. I thought it was delightful. But another part of me was looking for the funny reaction that I had of that first video and trying to get that hit. Oh, you know? yeah, the dopamine. And it wasn't there? Not as much. Because uh, <laughs> let's face it, after a while, you're like, oh, it's kind of funny. I mean, right? Like, I don't think anyone designs these thinking, oh, someone's going to binge on me in 30 minutes. Or if they do, I don't know how they go about making it that way. But the way that the algorithm gives it to us is, oh, you like that? You want more? You want more? You want more? Right. And I know that you're an early to bed kind of gal. So I I imagine your brain was like, we're tanking, we're tanking, (laughs) we're tanking. And you're trying to go for more dopamine. You're really at cross purposes. So I can see too how that might also lead into the feeling of like, it's just not as funny. That's intriguing to me. And most nights I will not be on the phone. Actually, I try to really take the advice of not logging on an hour before I go to bed and I read a book. 
because I cannot be the person that's looking online and then go to bed. I just can't do it. Right. And, you know, most of us are so good about that with our kids, but we're not with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we wouldn't let our kids be on a screen and then be like, okay, lights out, dude, get to bed because we know their brains will be all activated and triggered. Right. So it's really tricky. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Oh, I just got off a call where my other girlfriend was so confused. She is in a relationship. They're at a crossroads and she's a little divorce curious at the moment. Ooh, what did you tell her? Ah, I mean, what do you tell a girlfriend? It's their decision. I just wanted to be there for her and support her, but I didn't want to tell her what to do. Oh, of course. Well, it reminds me of my dear friend, Tamara Mendelson, who's a relationship coach and divorce expert. She's divorced herself and a mom of two, and she walks girlfriends of a certain age actually through a process of being divorce curious. Because some of us are just angry. Some of us are just feeling stuck in our relationships. But I'll give you the link and I'll leave it below for girlfriends of a certain age as well. And they can get free immediate access to this roadmap and find out from Tamara, what their next steps are. Oh my gosh, that sounds so helpful. I will definitely share that link with my girlfriend. Thank you. Amazing. You're welcome. And I'll link it below for all the girlfriends listening. Awesome. Oh, I feel so much better after doing your vocal warm ups, Jessica. <gasps> Ooh, me too. I am ready now to speak on our podcast and not got all tongue tied. I feel more calm after doing your breath and speech exercises. You are so right to feel that way. Did you know warming up before you speak is actually scientifically proven to help you feel more calm? And how do you know this? Well, as a voice coach of 20 years, I see how helpful it is with my public speaker clients. And a public speaker is anyone who speaks in public, which includes all of our girlfriends. I never thought of it that way. Mm. If you want, you can have your own copy of my public speaker checklist so you can feel this way every day, my free gift to you. Ooh, thanks. How do I get a copy? Ooh, you just click on the link in today's show notes, sign up, and you'll instantly get your own copy. Mm-hmm. Thanks, girlfriend. <gasps> Stay calm and speak on, girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend, sometimes I can get so stressed, I wonder if I'm burning out. I totally understand. Burnout can be tough, but there are things you can do to prevent it. Really? Like what? Well, I'm leading a five-day challenge that will help you to unleash your potential while tackling burnout. (gasps) That sounds amazing. How does it work? Each day, you and I will focus on a different aspect of your life that's causing you stress. You'll learn how to manage your time better, how to say no to things, and how to take better care of yourself. That sounds amazing. Fab, just like what I need as a recovering good girl. Yep. The challenge is free, so there's no risk in trying it. You can find the link in today's show notes. Ooh, I'm going to sign up right now. Yay! I'm so glad to hear it. You and I can kick burnout together. Wanted to point out a couple of the things that I actually do think are positive from social Please media. Do. Please yes. Do. So I do love being able to connect with my family near and far. I have some friends that are in other states and it's just really delightful to see my cousins, my friends and what they're doing because I know that I would have no sense of it. of of their lives. So that's really meaningful. Another thing that I am just now realizing has been huge is some of these grassroots movements, Me Too, Black Lives Matter, things that really were created and fostered online. And that was a really wonderful way to stay tuned in or to be able to donate. I know on Facebook for your birthday, you can have people donate to a certain organization. And throughout the last few years, I'll pick like a different cause. And actually, it's funny, it just popped up the other day, because my birthday's coming up. And it was like, you raised $350 for the Native American Health Center here in Oakland, Uh where my cousin works. And I was like, Oh, snap, I did that. Those like, good things about social media are are beautiful. And then it's just like navigating through all the muck that makes it so difficult. It's true. I will say the the Facebook birthday thing 
gets me every year. And I do love being reminded that so-and-so is having a birthday. I mean, one thing I did before I deleted everything was I gave people multiple notices. I'm getting off. I'm leaving. I'm heading out. So if you want to be in touch with me, DM me. I'll give you my phone number. I'll give you my email address. And those relationships have endured. And yeah. people do remember my birthday and I remember theirs, right? So the core people, we will do that for each other. But yeah. I will say it gets me every year. And my birthday is this weekend. So mm. I, you know, I do know that's a thing to look forward to of like all those messages. To me, that is technology and social media at its best because mm-hmm. it's connecting through the heart. And that is part of what's missing greatly right now, I think, in these in these times, that humanity, that real connection. Exactly. So I think when we get a taste of it online, it's a beautiful thing and it can be such a powerful thing. It's also here to stay. It's not yes. going anywhere. It's growing. It's evolving. And I think it's a beautiful thing that we have a choice how we want to interact with it, how much we want to interact with it. And I do think that for the friend and for the personal things, it, it really helps. But interestingly enough, when we really think about it, I was thinking, well, what do I like about it? Family, fun, and friends. Those are all things that I want to have in my normal in person life. Yes. Right. So that's really an extension of what we all want and need in our daily lives. And so the, all the other stuff that the good girl it starts looking around at online and making some knee jerk purchase for some skin cream in the middle of the night or whatever that I think is going to do something. That's where I feel like it starts getting into dangerous territory. Yeah. It is. Well, and speaking of dangerous territory, you know, recently we had our episode on Harry and Meghan, our first most watched and listened to, yeah. basically for us went viral on yeah. our level. We talked a lot in that episode about how and we even called them youngins, right? And they're not that much younger than us, <laughs> but it they felt like of a different generation, right? Yeah. And and we were talking about how it must be different for them, right? And Harry was born a celebrity, you know, through mm-hmm. no fault of his own. Megan made herself one, becoming an uh, actor and all of her, her social work that she does and how different it is. They seem to have a, just a very different relationship to sharing yes. than, than you and I had as girlfriends of a certain age. Do you have any other thoughts about that or anything else you wanted to say? I mean, that I'm just so glad I didn't live like that. I really think cliche that we are the fortunate ones. I admire them living out loud. I admire in some ways how they share so much, but I am so thankful that I didn't have that in my life before age 21. Um, I think in a way, again, it's the wild west. We don't know what we're working with, but it's something as you're developing that you might look back on regretting something. And that really concerns me. And because we didn't do it growing up, I think that is a great divide between the generations. It's like the before social media times and the after social media times. It reminds me a little bit of some of what my older relatives would talk about with TV. Oh, (laughs) seriously. So some of my relatives talk about how much they loved radio and that they would sit around the radio and they'd hear these great stories and they would imagine the pictures in their head. And they said when TV came along, it totally sucked the, you know, all the air out of radio. But all of a sudden the pictures were created for you. And by the time we came along, there were sitcoms, there was 24 hour TV, there was cable TV. And so I think there was a similar discussion to what TV is doing to our generation. Right. I mean, I think when TV came along, people thought this is going to be the end of society, the end of culture. This is the end of all good things as we know it. I mean, that could be true. (laughs) Some of the stuff we're starting to see now coming out. No kidding. Um, Right. And so social media is another or the internet in general and and the speed that information is passed around, whether it's real or not real. And we're all we're trying to figure that out in real time. Right. Yes, indeed. You and I are raising our kids in this culture. So you and I did not grow up in this fishbowl culture. Mm -hmm. My, My kids are in elementary school. And there's always somebody with a phone. There's always some kid with a phone. I always appreciate the parents who, you know, at least it's a flip phone for some, but some of them, it's not. They're smartphones fully on the internet, right? Yeah. And not being supervised. So it's something, and this might need to be another episode that we do, but how do we parent how it, well 
Yes. And with consciousness and heart and preserve, protect our kids in this culture, because I don't really know. I've had some cyberbullying. We even had our first troll on our Harry and Meghan episode, which I thought on was YouTube. hilarious <laughs> on YouTube. It made me, I remember, hot, you know, sending you a text, be like, we made it, right? Or you, I think you said that to me. And I was just like, we're getting, yes. begun. We're, we're getting, this is good. When you start to piss people off, you know, you're, you know, you're speaking your truth, right? right. You're doing something, something right. That's something that you and I probably couldn't do very well 10 years ago when we were still more in the good girl realm. Yes. But now it felt good. It felt like a celebration to be like, ha ha, I got a troll. There we go. Yeah. You know, not like to bring that on, but that is part of it. And so how do we protect our kids from the cyber bullying and, and things that you don't, and I don't even understand or know about yet. Some platform we don't know about that our kids yeah. may or may not know about that kind of thing. is That just feels very concerning because you and I mother in a very similar way. Way. We've always mm -hmm. wanted to protect our children, mm -hmm. you know, and do things at an age appropriate stage. So this mm -hmm. wait till eight is I'm, mm -hmm. I want to learn more about that mm -hmm. <laughs> offline away from you. But yeah, how do we do that? And I would love to hear that from our girlfriends too. How yes. are you protecting yourself and your children? Yes. What have we not brought up today? What have we not addressed? What do should we be thinking about with social media, the pros and the cons? And I will say, because I work with some wonderful teen vocalists that, you know what, they are so highly intelligent when it comes to social media, that they are learning this whole new way of being in ways that they can educate us about. And they surprise me because of quite a fair amount of them don't have social media accounts either. They're very, very careful with what they're putting out there. And I think that that is an awareness. And so my teen sons as well are also very, very careful. They might watch and observe, but I think they recognize that going public is, it can be quite dangerous. So there's a lot of young people who have, you know, breaks and boundaries and kind of get this whole new language in ways. And I think they're the ones that we should be learning from. Ooh, I like that perspective. I'm mm -hmm. going to try that one on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I feel a little like this scaredy old lady, like, oh no, oh no, you know, mm -hmm. I don't understand. And so your perspective that actually looking at the the longer picture, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looking at how some of these teenagers that you're spending your time with mm -hmm. are actually really graceful with it and maybe not jumping in with both feet. That to me, that feels very comforting. Absolutely. And they're doing great things, right? Like there is social activism online, like there has never been before. There are movements. I mean, and on an international scale, people are able to protest and to make real change through social media. So I do believe that it's kind of like most things in life where it can be used for good, it can be used for evil. And we in an interesting way, aren't quite fluent in this language. <laughs> right? You know, learning coming into it a little bit later. I don't know how all of our girlfriends feel about it. But I sometimes feel like I'm like, I just know the basic language. And then they go and create a whole new platform. So I think a lot of us who are still on Facebook, we're there just because we're like, God damn it. You, you mean I gotta go again? Again, you know, I resisted Instagram for a long time because I was like, how is it different from Facebook? And now there's some other new hot thing. So I think our desire too to continue to chase the technology and to get on the new hot thing, it's hard. It gets harder. I, you know, and I don't know if that ages me or not, but it just does in a way where I think that the young generation can really like be much more flexible. Okay. This is the new thing. Let's hop on over here. Yeah. And when we can be agile, oftentimes we're rewarded for doing it. I remember True. Uh, seeing a headline for a class that was coming up. Am I too old to be on TikTok? And I mm. saw that and I was like, am I? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not on TikTok, but it's the new platform. And so people are growing there. People are growing their businesses there. And so those are all things that I care about. 
but I still haven't jumped in. I'm, uh, you don't see me over there thing. Just- I think I did one post on TikTok and got really shy about it. And that's also a really good thing you're bringing up, Flache, which is kind of our own ageism. And do we feel like we have a place on some mm-hmm. of these newer platforms? Because one thing I have noticed is that if you're really giving something fun or meaningful online, it will be well received. And there's some great accounts out there with older people that are doing fun things and entertaining things. And so I think that's something for us to also recognize, right? That kind of reminds me of our our myths, bust, myth busting episode where yeah. we just fall behind the times with technology. I don't think we don't have to let these younger generations own these platforms. They're for everyone. They're for everyone. Reminder. Thank Mm -hmm. you. I'm going to straighten my spine on that one. Yeah. There you go. This is so great. So juicy. I can't wait to hear what our girlfriends have to say about it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to really like get into it a little more in our after hours conversations about this in our own private community. And I think that till next time I'm going to be noodling on this. I hope my girlfriends are too. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Like, share. Tell your girlfriends. Do you have a girlfriend struggling with this right now or or wondering, should she cancel or should she stay? You know, share this episode with her. Exactly. To hop on, to hop off. What are you feeling like about this whole social media world we're living in? Absolutely. Well, it was great. Great food for thought. I loved it. And uh, until next time, girlfriends. bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today to Girlfriends of a Certain Age podcast. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and comment wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living their best lives. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.